Hello friends, this video on triangles part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The topics to be covered are introduction, congruency of triangles, criteria for congruency of triangles, properties of triangles, and inequalities in a triangle. So the whole chapter is about triangles and congruency of triangles. What is triangle? So we know that triangle word came from triangle this three angle okay tri means three an angle is something we know in the last chapter we studied about angle so any figure which has three angle is called triangle or any closed figure so let me write any closed figure formed by Three angles or three intersecting lines, you can say it has three angles. Any three closed figure with three angles. It has to be closed because if you see this figure, this figure it has one angle, two angle, and three. But this is not a triangle. Why? Because it is not closed. Correct? So this is not a triangle. So closed figure is a critical term, closed figure with three angles. Or you can say closed figure formed by three intersecting lines. And if you see this triangle, this is an example of triangle, it has three lines. Okay, it has three angles. It also has three vertices. Vertices one, vertices two, vertices three. Okay. So Triangle will have three angles, three lines, three vertices, and triangle is a closed figure. Please note, closed is a critical term here. So in this chapter, we'll study about congruency of triangle and some properties of triangle. Mostly congruency and properties of triangle. So before we understand the congruency of triangle, let's understand why should we study triangle. What is the application of triangle in our day-to-day -day life? A very good example is to calculate the height of the building. For example, this is such a big building. And I want to know the height of this building. So one approach is you somehow stand here and then you move down and calculate it. It is very difficult. It's a very tiresome process. You need uh, really good machines to do that. The other good way is to use the concept of triangle where somebody will stand here and then you find the length from here to here. This is pretty easy because it's all surface land. And then you can actually just by finding this length and finding this angle which the tower makes from this point this angle you can calculate easily you can actually find the distance of the tower or the length of the tower or the height of the tower we will see this kind of questions in uh, future chapters where where we'll have to find the height of the tower or distance from the shape all these kind of questions are solved using the concept of triangle you see the bridges, these bridges you see the triangle here. A lot of concepts of triangles are used to make sure the bridge is strong. House, when you make, if you see any house here, you will see similar triangle. Roof, this is triangular. This is typically in the area which has more rainfall or more snowfall. So the rain will not accumulate into floor. So to construct house, we need the concept of triangles. To construct the signboard, you see. There's a triangle here. Okay, there's a triangle here. It is also used in astronomy a lot. The concept of triangle is used a lot in astronomy for zooming in, zooming out, and those kind of stuff. Actually, in the internal, in the physics world, triangle concept is used a lot. If you, in the field of carpentry, furniture, you should know the concept of triangle because you are when it's required to create triangles, squares, and this kind of figures in that world. There are so many applications of triangles in the world. Okay, so let's start with the congruency con concept because I told in this chapter we will study mostly about congruency, congruency of triangles. So there are two terms, congruent and similar. Okay, so if you see these triangles, these uh, toys, they look similar, right? They are similar, but are they congruent? The answer is no. If you see these four toys, one, two, three, four, they look similar, 
but they have different height. Okay, and the size is also different. If you see the eye size here, eye size here is different. This is big, this is small, but they are similar. So they are similar, but they are not congruent. Congruent means it has to be exactly same. For example, if you take the tires, this is tire one and this is tire two for a given car. Both the tire in a given car is same with exactly same. Okay? So they are congruent. These tires are congruent. All the four tires are. Okay. You see these two teddy bears, they are exactly same. You see the height of these teddy bears, both height, width, right? Everything is same and it looks exactly same. That is congruent. You see, you can actually overlap this teddy bear with other. That is why you say this is congruent. Okay. Example, you can take two uh, visa cards from the same company, same design. They are also congruent. You can actually overlap these two cards. Two pens, same, same brand, same color. They are congruent. You can overlap these. Right? So congruent means the figure which is equal in all respects. So congruent is figures that are equal in all respects. Okay, or you can say that uh, figures or or I can just write on my division or figures. Shape and size are same. Both shape and size are same. So in this case, if you see shape is same, size is not same. That is similar. Both shape and size is same. That means it is congruent. Okay. Please note, every congruent figure is similar, but similar figures are not congruent. Because this is similar, this is not congruent. These two figures, when you see the tires, they are both congruent and similar. Because if it is congruent, it has same shape and same size, right? So for congruency, if you see the difference, I just explain once again. For congruence figures, you need same size and shape. So you see. But for similar figures, you just need same shape. Size is not required. So that's why if a figure is congruent, it has to be similar. So in this chapter, we'll be talking more about congruency, where we say that the, shape, uh, the size and shape is same for triangles. Okay. And if you see one more example of congruent, if you see the ice uh, tray, okay, these figures, if you see all these are actually congruent. You any if you see this, all these are same. Okay. These are all cuboid, same size. And that's why the ice which you make from the ice tray, they are all same. So let's talk about some congruent figures in geometry. So let's draw two circles with the same radius. You'll see that they are exactly congruent because you can overlap one circle on another. You can draw two square of the same size, the, the dimensions are same. Then you'll see that they will overlap because they are congruent. Draw two triangles, same side. Let's draw two equilateral triangle here to make our life simple. Two equilateral triangle of the same side length. You see that these two triangles are exactly overlapping and they are congruent figures. So in geometry also we have concept of congruency. Now let's understand the congruency of triangle in little detail. By definition, two triangles are congruent if their sides, the sides and angle, both sides and angles of these two triangles are equal to the corresponding sides and corresponding angles. Please note three different critical terms, sides, angles and corresponding. That means there are two triangles. If this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side. Also, this angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle, and this angle is equal to this angle, then they are congruent. Right? Sides and angles are equal to corresponding sides. If that is the case, then two triangles are congruent. 
in that case if they are congruent they will overlap so you see here they are overlapping this is an example of equilateral triangle let's take example of right hand triangle a 90 degree so in this case, these two triangles will be congruent if this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side, this side is equal to this side, this angle is equal to this angle, this angle is equal to this angle, and this angle is equal to this angle. So in this case also, it will overlap. Let's take an example of any other triangle, which is not an equilateral or right angle triangle. Here, these two triangles will be congruent if this side is equal to this side, this side will be equal to this side, this side will be equal to this side, this will be equal to this, this angle is equal to this angle, and this angle is equal to this angle. All three sides and all three angles are equal. Corresponding. All the corresponding three sides and corresponding three angles are equal, then it will be congruent figures. Okay. Please note the orientation may differ. For example, in this case, these two triangles are congruent or not. So if we compare this side with this side, they are not same. This side with this side, they are not same. So what we can do is we can reorient. We can rotate. So we see, if you rotate this triangle, so typically you can rotate it with any degree. So I just rotated this with 90 degree. Now I see that this side is equal to this side. This side is equal to this side. This side is equal to this side. This angle is equal to this angle. This angle is equal to this angle. And this angle is equal to this angle. And now it overlaps also. Thus, they are congruent. Okay, so, so for two triangles to be congruent, the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles has to be same. So corresponding angle and sides are critical term here. It has to be there in the definition. Okay, so, so when I say congruent part or the congruent triangles, so for example, let's give some values here. is e here. So the way I denote is ABC is congruent like this. Okay. Congruent to triangle PQ1. Please note ABC is congruent to PQ or I will not write let's suppose ABC is congruent to let's suppose RPQ. I will not write because when I'm saying these are congruent, that means AB side is equal to PQ side, just by name. BC side is equal to QR side. And AC side is equal to PR side. So when I say ABC, I can just blindly draw. If I'm give, uh, if I've been giving that ABC is congruent to PQR, I can just blindly draw. This is the first A, B, and C. And here PQR, so this is the first P, and then Q and C. I can follow any convention, I can start with any node, I can follow any convention, clockwise, anti-clockwise, but in this whole chapter, we'll focus, we'll always take this as the first, this is the second, and this is the third. Here also, this is the first, second, and third. A, B, C, P, Q, R. And here, if you see, when you say A, B, C is congruent to P, Q, R, that means side A, B is equal to side P, Q. Here also, if you see, side A, B is equal to side P, Q. B, C is equal to Q, R. Here you see, B, C is equal to Q, R. And AC is equal to PR. AC is equal to PR. Also, this is angle 1, then this is angle 2, and this is angle 3. Let me make it angle 1 dash, 2 dash, and 3 dash. So here you see 1 is equal to angle 1 dash, angle 2 is equal to angle 2 dash, and 3 is equal to angle 3 dash. Please pay attention here. Very, very critical concept here. Because when you say ABC is congruent to PQR, and you know why don't you say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle RPQ? Because AB is not equal to R. Yeah. The triangle, I mean side AB is not equal to side R. So when you say this is congruent, it has to be congruent in the same order. AB side should be equal to PQ, AC should be equal to PR, and BC should be equal to QR. Okay, very, very important concept. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot.